Hello and welcome to PC Retro Tech. This is a short bonus video on this rare AdLib sound card that I've been showing off on the channel for a few weeks. I originally thought this was faulty and so I bought a couple of OPL2 chips, that's the main music chip that goes on these, the Yamaha YM3812. And a few people chimed in the comments and said those are probably fake because they're apparently manufactured in 2010 according to the date codes and that seems a little late. So what I'm going to do in this video is just try and settle once and for all whether those are fake chips. These are the two chips here and we probably should start by looking for some obvious signs of tampering. First of all you'll notice that this chip here is a lot lighter than this one here. And given that they're supposedly made in the same fab in the same week according to the date code and the manufacturing code, uh, these chips really should be identical. The date code itself is already an indication it says the 40th week of 2010, which is probably a little bit late for a YM3812 in this form factor. Now I don't know for sure that Yamaha didn't do a factory run in that week, but it seems very, very unlikely. Uh, these chips probably haven't been made since about 1994 or so. Uh, on the other hand, I can find these kinds of chips uh, with dates from just about every year since 1994. So uh, it is a little bit hard to say for sure that they've stopped production, but uh, my suspicion is very strongly that they have. Now the other indication here is that there seem to be some kind of black material in these holes. Those should be shiny. This is where the plastic has been extruded from the mold and uh, those really shouldn't have black gunk in them. So I'll show you that in a moment with some isopropyl alcohol. I've already been scraping around in those. Uh, the other thing is the leads. Uh, these seem to have been retinned. Now that's not always a sign that the chips are not genuine. Uh, it just means they've been recycled. And I actually missed this at first, but it's a little bit easier to see on this chip that the leads are not quite uniform, but they're very shiny, and this is because of the retinning that's done to make them look uh, newer than they actually are. Now, I'm not worried about that personally because I bought these as second-hand chips, and they were dirt cheap, uh, just a few euros each. So that's not of a concern to me, but if they've been remarked, that is more of an issue. So what I'm going to do is scrape around in these holes with some IPA and see if anything comes out. And if you're worried whether I need to use acetone for this, I'll link to a video in the description where Adrian Black uses isopropyl alcohol and he gets an immediate result. Uh, so I don't think it's always necessary to use acetone. It is a harsher chemical. Uh, it's not super bad, but it's also not particularly biologically friendly. And, of course, it really, really smells terrible. And if you've got any quantity of it, you've got to think about storage and so on. So it's more complicated. Uh, so I prefer to use IPA myself, but I do actually have some acetone here today as well, so that we can experiment with that. So let's start with the IPA and see what, if anything, comes out of these black circular holes here. So I've just put some IPA on the end of a cotton bud, or that's what we call them in Australia. And yeah, I'm just going to scrub it around inside this hole and uh, on the other side as well and see if anything at all comes out. Now, I did actually get a little bit of black on the cotton bud previously and some of it could have been dirt, I suppose, but let's take a look. And yeah, you can see there's uh, some black material that's coming out of that hole. Let's try the other chip and see whether we get the same result. And, yeah, there's not very much happening, that's for sure. Whatever's going on here uh, is not a really massive uh, problem. It's not really obvious. But, uh, yeah, certainly something is coming off these chips around those holes. Now, the interesting thing about this, uh, yeah, you can see it's getting quite black now. But the interesting thing is, when I rub the main surface of the chip here, I don't get anything coming off, which is really bizarre. It's almost as if these chips were at some point remarked, but uh, that someone's actually removed the black material that was lacquered over the top. Now that doesn't seem like a likely explanation because normally they grind off uh, what's there. Well, actually, that's not true. Sometimes they actually just lacquer over the top. 
But uh, yeah, I don't really get very much, if anything, coming off the top of the chip, and I scrubbed these really hard for a long time. So some of you are probably wondering at this point, well, is there a difference if I try acetone? And of course, I've been wondering the same thing myself. So I'm gonna give it a go and see if we get a different result with that chemical. Now, obviously with acetone, you wanna make sure that you don't get it in your eyes and you don't spill it on yourself. Uh, but anyway, let's see what happens now when I actually try to rub the top of this chip with acetone. Do we get a different answer? Is it the teller of all truths? And I have to say, uh, I'm not seeing any difference uh, using acetone on this chip. Now, if you watch the video by Adrian Black, uh, now some stuff is coming off. See, in those holes, there is black material coming out, absolutely for certain. Uh, but nothing off the top of the chip. And this is bizarre. Uh, the best explanation I can come up with is that this chip was at some point remarked. And uh, the, there's two possibilities from there. Either it was remarked and it's been hardened and the chemical that's been used to harden the surface of the chip has actually not penetrated into these holes properly. Well, this one actually, I do seem to be getting something coming off, so that's quite interesting. So maybe this one is actually remarked and we're actually removing uh, the writing on this one entirely. Very hard to say for sure, but uh, yeah, I think I can't read the writing very well at all now. So uh, I'm gonna keep rubbing this for a while and uh, see just how much black I can get off these with acetone. But uh, this one here, I really don't seem to be re removing very much from the surface of that. Uh, that's uh, really strange. So let me have a go at this for a while uh, off camera and I'll come back with the results. Well, I would assume that that is a concrete result. Uh, you can see that there's an enormous amount of black come off these and you can't read the writing on either chip anymore. Uh, so I think this conclusively shows that these were in fact remarked. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to get this back down to uh, a lower layer to see what these chips were previously, unfortunately. Uh, I've been scrubbing for ages here and I've barely made a scratch in the surface. Uh, but I think that uh, the thing that we have to do now is to try this on a definitely genuine chip uh, to make sure that acetone doesn't dissolve all epoxy chips. Uh, it turns out that acetone will dissolve epoxy, but uh, the chemical that's used to make these chips uh, just has epoxy as one of its components. So I don't know whether just sustained uh, exposure to acetone and a lot of scrubbing will make this happen to any chip or whether this is just my chips. But if you watch the video by Adrian Black, you'll see that uh, he got instant results. So I'm a little bit suspicious uh, that I've just scrubbed too hard and too long here. But uh, let's give it a try on something else. And yeah, I'm definitely not gonna use a genuine 3812 for that. Uh, I'll just find some random IC uh, on some broken card and we'll try it there. Well, this chip here should do. It's certainly made of the same material and it's also uh, just on a port card, which I have dozens. This one's also damaged. Uh, moreover, this one is probably Hitachi, I think. Uh, that's perhaps what that H stands for. Uh, so this is an ideal candidate since those other chips are supposed to be Hitachi as well. So I'm just going to rub uh, this for a while and see if this also comes off. And I think you're seeing uh, the first stages of uh, exactly the same sort of result. Uh, there's black coming onto this cotton bud. So let me do this off camera for a while and see what happens. Well, it does seem that the result is different in this case. I actually switched to a fresh cotton bud with a whole lot more acetone to see whether I get any more black off this chip. And the answer seems to be no. After scrubbing for quite a while, nothing further came off. Uh, the result is not pretty, and you wanna compare this with a chip that I haven't done this to. Uh, obviously, there's a big difference here now, so it still damages the chip regardless. Uh, and you can see that this writing has faded, but that fading, has stabilized, it's not getting worse as I put more acetone on. So this is an interesting result and I think it shows us that 
uh, there's at the very least something quite different about those old chips compared to these newer ones. So uh, is it because these have been remarked? I'm afraid I can't tell you that 100% for sure. My suspicion is obviously very strongly that they have, but I'm not even going to return these. I actually bought these for about the cost of a cup of coffee. And if I'd paid 50 euros each for them, my goodness, would I be returning them? But uh, that's just not the case. So uh, the only thing I can think of to do now is to try and figure out whether there could be a different chemical composition in the actual chip material that's used on modern chips. And one way we could do that is to look at the underside and see if the same thing happens. Uh, when chips are remarked, it's typically only the top that's remarked, not the bottom. Now, the interesting thing here is that these are a characteristic Hitachi shape. Uh, some Hitachis have a little dimple uh, in the corner, but I have found ones that don't. Uh, so that's not necessarily characteristic, especially of modern Hitachis. Uh, underneath, they have very characteristic Hitachi codes on the bottom. So uh, I do actually think these chips, whatever they were, were actually manufactured in a Hitachi fab, which is actually what the fab markings also said. So let's now try rubbing the bottom of this chip and see if we get the same result here. And maybe that'll tell us something about whether the material the chip is made of is just different or whether there was really something done to the tops of those chips. The bottom surface of the chip does seem to have a slightly different texture, that's for sure, than the top. I don't know if that really means anything, but notice how shiny these markings are here. That's really what those extrusion marks on the top should have looked like. Uh, so that was probably the first sign that I overlooked. Now, is anything coming off the bottom here? Uh, a bit hard to say at this point. Uh, there's a tiny amount of darkening on the cotton bud, but that could just be dirt. Uh, it's probably not showing up on camera at all, but uh, I can see that with my naked eye. But yeah, so far, not really a lot happening on the bottom of the chip here. So I'll do this for a few minutes off camera, just as I did with the top of the chip and uh, we'll see what the result is. Well, I think that's about as conclusive an answer as we're going to get. Even after quite a few minutes of scrubbing hard with acetone, you can see that there's just a very small amount of black on the cotton bud. Uh, it's really not even visible on camera probably, but it is quite visible to the naked eye. But nothing like uh, the horrible black that comes off the top of these chips. I mean, it's just chalk and cheese in comparison. So I would say that's a strong indication that uh, the bottom of these chips is genuine and the top is not. Now I can't say it absolutely for certain. Uh, it's just not possible to be that conclusive. Uh, for example, I've scrubbed the tops of these chips for a long time with isopropyl alcohol before I applied the acetone. Uh, I've done it under different conditions and at different times. Uh, I've obviously only done it for these two chips. I haven't done it for a large sample of chips. So I don't really want anyone beating people over the head with this video. Uh, but the conclusion that I draw here is to a fairly high degree of certainty, these chips are in fact remarked. Now I know some people are going to have much stronger opinions on this than me, and others are going to be a little bit more cautious, but uh, this is, uh, in my opinion, about as conclusive as we're going to get.